Martin with Anjali Comet. Welcome, everyone. The Senate Finance Committee on Tuesday became the fifth and final congressional panel to approve legislation to reform the nation's health care system. The Finance Committee backed the measure in a vote of 14 to 9. Maine Senator Olympia Snow was the only Republican to support the bill. She said she shared many of her Republican colleagues' reservations about the legislation and warned Democrats that they could lose her support later in the legislative process. So is this bill all that I would want far from it? Is it all that it can be? No. But when history calls, history calls. And I happen to think that the consequences of inaction dictate the urgency of Congress to take every opportunity to demonstrate its capacity to solve the monumental issues of our time. As I've said throughout this process and through the group of six, that there are many, many miles to go in this legislative journey. As one national story characterized it recently, people do have concerns about what we will do with reform. But at the same time, they want us to continue working. And that is what my vote to report this bill out of committee here today represents, is to continue working the process. My vote today is my vote today. It doesn't forecast what my vote will be tomorrow. The $829 billion proposal would require almost all Americans to buy insurance or pay a penalty and drops a mandate that all employers offer health coverage. The bill does not include a government-backed public option to compete with private insurers. Instead, it proposes funds to set up nonprofit cooperatives. The Congressional Budget Office said the bill would provide coverage to 29 million people, but still leave 25 million people uninsured in 2019. Speaking in the Rose Garden, President Obama described the committee's vote as a, quote, critical milestone. Today we reached a critical milestone in our effort to reform our health care system. After many months of thoughtful deliberation, the fifth and final committee responsible for health care reform has passed a proposal that has both Democratic and Republican support. Health care talks now go back behind closed doors as Senate Majority Leader Harry Reid will work with Senate leaders to merge the Finance Committee bill with a more generous bill passed by the Health, Education, Labor and Pensions Committee, which passed earlier this year. That bill calls for both the government-backed public option to compete with private insurers and a mandate that employers help cover their workers. Reid will work to blend the bills together into a new version that can get the 60 votes needed to avert a Republican filibuster and guarantee its passage. For more, we go to Washington, D.C. We're joined by Jane Hampshire, the founder of Fire Dog Lake. She's been closely following the story. Jane, welcome to Democracy Now! What is your assessment of this bill that's been passed by the Senate Finance Committee? I don't think there are any surprises in the bill that came out of the Finance Committee yesterday, Amy. I think the surprising thing is that uh, White House Chief of Staff Rahm Emanuel was on the news hour last night trying to claim that the president still supports the public option. This bill was written by the White House. It was negotiated for months with Rahm Emanuel, with uh, the Baucus staff, um, with all of the stakeholders, and it contains in it the things that the White House wants. And there is no public option. It taxes benefits for uh, union workers. The AFL-CIO is opposing it very strongly because of that. And I th hope that now at least we can have a frank conversation about what it is that the White House is backing. Explain the issue of the unions, why the AFL-CIO doesn't support this. What do you mean taxing? Well, one of the ways that the president has declared that this bill has to be deficit neutral. So whatever money is spent on subsidies or anything else has to be raised by taxes or revenues saved someplace else. So the House bills uh, actually tax high income people, people making over a million dollars in order to pay for a chunk of it. But the Senate decided not to go that way. And what they did was tax what are known as Cadillac plans which are the plans that offer very comprehensive coverage to many of the labor union uh, workers in the AFL-CIO. It doesn't hit as hard the uh, union workers in the SEIU, who tend to be lower wage workers. So it, it very much privileges one union over another. 
But it's, you know, the workers in the AFL-CIO uh, bargain for this as opposed to getting uh, contract, you know, salary negotiations for, you know, for decades. And it's trying to put the, the, the cost of the bill on their backs. And that's why the AFL-CIO is opposing it very strongly this week, despite the fact that, according to Bloomberg, Rahm Emanuel called uh, the head of the AFL-CIO and the head of AFSCME last week and asked them not to oppose the Bacchus bill. And Jane Hampshire, the issue of bipartisanship, many Democrats are hailing the support from Republican Senator Olympia Snow. Well, that gets into something that I think is actually bigger than the health care debate right now. Because if you look at what's happening, a few years ago, a filibuster was a really rare thing to have happen. And one party did it to another. And now what we're being told is that members of the Democratic Party can filibuster the other party. Uh, Joe Lieberman has stepped out and said that uh, he, is, uh, he is a member of the Democratic Caucus, even if he is not a Democrat. And he has said that he may not vote for this bill. Therefore, in order to get the 60 votes needed to block a filibuster, uh, the, everyone is saying that Olympia Snow's vote is needed. What that does, what that, that threshold that is now established of 60 votes with the members of the Democratic Caucus able to cross over and join with the Republicans to stop legislation from coming to the floor, means that every piece of legislation coming out of the, of, of the Senate will, in effect, be controlled by its most conservative members of the Democratic Caucus or, or the Republicans willing to cross over, like Olympia Snow. So now we're in a situation where Olympia Snow is going to be involved in all of the negotiations in combining the two bills. And she supports very, very regressive elements. She's been handed basically the ability to write this bill. And it certainly isn't the change that I think a lot of people voted for last November. Jane Hampshire, the insurance industry recently intensified efforts to influence the congressional debate over health care reform. On Monday, the industry trade group America's Health Insurance Plans, or AHIP, released a study warning that the Senate Finance Committee's health bill would result in sizable hikes in insurance premiums. Massachusetts Senator John Kerry criticized the study and said it shows why a public option is necessary. Frankly, uh, the insurance industry ought to be ashamed of this report. It was commissioned from PricewaterhouseCoopers, released on Monday, uh, and it really says uh, it, it's a powerful argument, frankly, for why we ought to have a public plan. It's a powerful argument for the attitude of an industry towards this effort. And there's an old saying that if you're not part of the part of the solution, you're part of the problem. The fact is, the Pricewaterhouse analysis is significantly flawed, and the results are simply not valid. Jane Hampshire, your response? Well, the Price, Price Waterhouse Cooper themselves is distancing themselves from uh, at least the conclusions that AHIP drew from when it released the study. But we're in a situation where the stakeholders, uh, as they are known, the uh, hospitals, the AMA, pharma, the device manufacturers, were in negotiations with the White House and with the Bacchus Committee all summer, and they reached secret deals. Uh, we know the details of the pharma deal because they were leaked to the, new, to the Huffington Post. We know some of the details of the uh, hospital deals. Uh, we don't know what the rest of these deals were, but we do know that most of them were probably memorialized in the Senate Finance Committee bill. Now, the there were supposed to be triggers uh, in there, and Olympia Snow was the vehicle for delivering them. Rahm Emanuel has been talking about them since January, and they essentially render any health care reform meaningless and, uh, and, and are, are designed never to kick in. And I think the hospitals very much wanted to get them in there. I don't think that they're out yet. Uh, Olympia Snow has, they thought that they might not be able to get them through the Finance Committee, so Snow has said that she will bring them up on the floor. But the, you know, AHIP wants its deals honored, and I, and I think that they are going to kick up a fuss, start advertising, and will be in Harry and Louise territory again until they get what they want. Uh, Jane Hampshire, what about states deciding whether they will offer a public option individually? Do you mean the co-ops, uh, the, the, the co-op plan that comes out of the Senate bill? The, the idea that Kucinich has put forward. Uh, oh, the, oh, well, uh, that would be a great thing, I think, in, in, uh, to be able to allow the states to offer uh, single-payer 
if they want to, but I don't think it has the votes to pass the House, and I, I certainly don't think it has the votes to pass the Senate, unfortunately. And why do you believe the White House doesn't want a public option? Well, when they began these negotiations this last summer, the goal of Rahm Emanuel, the White House Chief of Staff, was to keep the stakeholders 